almost like the flashpoint where it starts, one of the key matrix lines that will help shatter this status centralized system. Good evening, everyone. It is Friday, June 29th, 2012, and this is Flashpoint Radio. I am Jay-Z, as always, your host, and I thank you for joining me. Remember, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, Flashpoint Radio, on both. It is Friday. That means finance. And boy, a lot has happened since last Friday, and we'll get right into it. And yes, we will touch on the Supreme Court ruling yesterday upholding uh, Obamacare. It has sent shockwaves through the country, through the markets, through the political arenas, and well, it's only going to get worse. We will start this evening with a story that didn't get much news this week, but I think it will end up being uh, used to take your freedoms, especially online and electronically. From Sky News, this is Fox News's UK Bureau, fraud ring in hacking attack on 60 banks. This is from, uh, I believe, Wednesday, Wednesday, June 27th. Some 60 million euro is stolen from bank accounts in a massive cyber raid after fraudsters raid dozens of banks around the world. Well, the headline is misleading, uh, 60 million euro, because in the same story, it said, quote, they have identified 60 different servers, many of them in Russia, and they have identified one alone that has been used to steal 60 million euro. And in actuality, the total attempted fraud could be as high as 2 billion euro. And as of Wednesday, quote, there are dozens of servers still grinding away at this fraud, in effect, stealing money. They say the fraudster's objective in these attacks is to siphon large amounts from high balance accounts, hence the name chosen for this research, Operation High Roller. And they say that the hackers must have an insider level of understanding. Uh, we've seen Flame, Stuxnet, and now a giant attack on uh, internet or on electronic finance around the globe, which all of the sovereign nations, the central banks, all of the globalist connected countries will now state that they need to crack down electronically on the internet and take freedom away because it's become too wild online. So look for this to be a way of for them to. Uh, steal your anonymity, uh, push some sort of draconian internet rules that uh, you know basically guide you to where they want to go. I'm guaranteeing you that this will be used to take liberty around the world. And then we are going to move. This comes from Market Streams, MarketWatch.com. U.S. stocks gain build on housing data. This is from earlier in the week, and I just wanted to touch on this because they say that the housing market is uh, on its way up. They said housing is bucking the trend, quote. U.S. home prices rose 1.3% in April. Their first monthly gain since last autumn. First gain since last autumn, but a report that had consumer confidence in June falling for the fourth straight month illustrates a lull here in the economy. But one month, one small factor, one small uh, stat that they can use to give good news to the markets and that is enough to move the markets. Uh, surely they will next month go back and revise that down from the 1.3% rise in April. And yes, we just saw last week or two weeks ago that uh, foreclosures are on their way up. Consumer confidence is at an all-time low. And uh, things aren't getting better. But they will use any good news to move the markets so the institutional traders can make money. And from Reuters, oil posts fourth biggest daily gain on record. This is from today. Oil surged on Friday in heavy trading to the fourth biggest daily gain on record. As a deal by European leaders to shore up Eurozone, banks triggered frantic short covering by funds that had been riding crude's price collapse over the last quarter. So they were getting out of uh, oil. They were getting out of their shorts. And that sent oil spiraling up. So look for gas prices to rise. I got gas earlier this week for $2.99. I'll tell you what, if Barack Obama can keep gas prices around $3 at the national average, he's guaranteed to get elected in November. But yes, big oil, the Saudis, and everyone else 
that is above you is making money while you're losing money. From Yahoo News, France ready to share budget sovereignty from Tuesday. France must agree to share sovereignty over its budget with its EU partners, French Budget Minister Jerome Kahuzik said on Tuesday. This is what we're talking about, quote, budget solidarity in Europe, which implies that not only that the French budget, but also the German, Italian, and Spanish budgets be subjected to a review by all our partners. So if there wasn't enough centralization of economic power in Europe, France says that, yes, we're willing to give you all of our books as long as we can see all of your books. Germany has, stop, has to stop imagining inflation everywhere, and France has to understand that it also, perhaps in the interest of our country, for France to move towards the sharing of sovereignty. Sharing of sovereignty? When you share sovereignty, you lose sovereignty. It goes against the very definition of sovereignty. When you give uh, institutions and in other countries your information, that's not sovereignty at all. That's globalization, and that is a loss of sovereignty for all individuals. And the markets, they jumped up by 277 points, giving them their best June since 1997. Why? From the Telegraph, debt crisis, Germany caves in over bond buying, bank aid after Italy and Spain threatened to block everything. Germany has today caved into demands made by Italy and Spain for immediate Eurozone aid to bring down their soaring borrowing costs, sending the euro and markets higher. Yes, they're just throwing more money at problems and rewriting loans and saying that it's good. And well, institutional traders, hedge funds, they're making tons of money off this news. Are you going to make money? No, because this is devaluation of all currencies globally, and it will eventually lead to the complete collapse. And well, we saw last week Mario Monti say there was one week to save the Eurozone, and it took a threat to block, quote, everything in order to get Angela Merkel to agree to this uh, deal. And she's going to have to go home to the German people and face them because they really don't care about the rest of Europe anymore because they're the last leg of a table that's wobbling and they're the last thing keeping this whole thing from collapsing. And it will collapse and Germany will be at the bottom, crushed beneath all of the other lazy countries in Europe that just want to spend, 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 give away, give away and never face the piper. And what does all this mean? Uh, they're you know creating new monetary systems, giving more power to central banks Let's see what this means. This is from CNBC last Saturday, and this is mainstream media admitting what we all already knew. Let's, let's see what they had to say on the Kudlow report last Saturday. Right now, the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited about in that. The stock market starts trading off in the 10 to 15 to 20 percent area. The chairman's going to come in and throw some stimulus at it. So to answer your question, we are absolutely slaves to central banks. because and We'd love to be slaves to the economy, but the economic numbers continue to do nothing but trend lower. Mr. LeCamp, do we work for the uh, central we know, bankers. We know Mr. LeCamp, we do. We work? This is a free. We do. Uh, look, markets are driven by policy now. They're not driven by market forces. They're right. driven by uh, fiscal cliffs. They're driven by central bank proclamations. They're driven by false rumors coming out of the ECB. Fiat currency they really that's made it continually watered investors. down. They continue to water our currency Absolutely. down so the markets go but up and we feel good about it. We're, we're <laughs> basically uh, beholden to what the central bankers and policymakers do right. rather than to the fundamentals in the economy because we have not been able to generate real, real growth without doing one of two things. That is, debasing the currency or borrowing our way to a false prosperity. Oh, we invest because remember that every central bank in the world, not just us, ultimately has to devalue their currency. So we are absolutely slaves to central banks. Because yeah, quote, we are slaves to the central banks. Aren't you so happy? So now it's proof. It's out there. No denying it. We are slaves to central bankers. Um, the markets, they need them. Obviously, central bankers make an announcement like they did today, and the stock market is up by 277 points. That's good for institutional traders. That's good for financial advisors. It's not very good for you because it devalues currency. From CNBC as well, stocks soared. Dow Post best June since 1997. 
defying expectations for a June swoon. June is usually the second worst month for the market next to September, but this time was a bit of a fluke. A bit of a fluke? No, I think not. This is the pump and dump, and the eventual dump will dump you all on your butts. And I'm not talking about the bankers. I'm not talking about the elite. I'm talking about you and me. We'll be the ones left holding the bag. Remember, bailouts equal slavery. When countries get bailouts, that is an official transfer of debt from the government to its people. Before the bailouts, the people do not owe it. And finally this evening, some news regarding health care, Obamacare and the Supreme Court. From the Washington Post yesterday, hospital stocks sharply higher, insurers slide after health care ruling. Does that surprise anyone? Hospital stocks rose sharply Thursday after the Supreme Court guaranteed them millions more paying customers by upholding the core of President Barack Obama's health care overhaul. But some insurance companies, faced with instituting new rules and ensuring people that usually shouldn't get insurance because of the, you know, their actuaries say that they're not a good bet, their stocks slid. So yes, if when the Supreme Court was deliberating and made it seem as though it would be struck down, the hospital stocks tanked, the institutional inside traders bought knowing that this would happen, and now the stocks shoot up. Pump and dump. Everything's a pump and dump. And finally, from Politico, I meant to mention this yesterday in both of my boil downs of the Supreme Court ruling. Rubio, IRS to come after uninsured. Yes, the one thing not being trumpeted to all of those liberals who believe that this is free socialized health care is that no, this is now the IRS enforcing healthcare. Since it is a tax, and they said it wasn't a tax, but then again there was funding for the IRS within the healthcare law. Hmm. Seems like a scam to me. Now the IRS will get your health records. Why? Because they have to enforce the individual mandate. And if they have to enforce the individual mandate for those not carrying insurance, that means they need to know who is carrying insurance. Oh yeah, and the IRS has been arming with guns and ammo over the past two years. Maybe for this reason, right here. I don't like Marco Rubio, and he's only saying this to get a political dig, make himself and the Republicans look better, but it's true. The IRS will now be the enforcers of healthcare in this country. So look for another filing, another form, and more headaches come the first of the year in 2013 and beyond. And guess what? Mitt Romney will do nothing. This will never go away, ever, until the collapse, until everything breaks down. It is time for the second American revolution. It is an intellectual revolution. It is not a revolution fought on the battlefield with guns and ammo. It is the revolution fought with wit and logic. You have to know what you're talking about and you have to defend your stances. Do your research, read alternative news, turn off the TV, and read a book. Have a good weekend. It's 107 degrees in St. Louis right now. I hope it's cooler where you are. But either way, Jay-Z signing off for Flashpoint Radio saying God bless and keep your eyes to the sky. Why